Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we are going to be looking at how to disassemble a C96 Mauser broom handle. Now, it's a pretty straightforward process. We're not going to disassemble this gun into every single little piece. This is going to be a very basic uh, field strip in case you need to, to uh, check serial numbers, check uh, just mechanical function, uh, clean your board, clean your gun after just a basic shooting of non-corrosive ammunition. Uh, really anything just kind of standard field stripping of the gun. Uh, you certainly can take your gun apart more, but I will warn you, it can be pretty tricky. There are a couple of strong springs inside of this guy that you really don't want to mess with necessarily, but we'll take a look at how to do it. So first things first, this is a very nice small ring hammer in the 114,000 serial number range from about 1908 to about 1910, I would guess. Uh, standard gun, nothing amazing about it. Uh, we'll take a look at it a little bit closer after we're done taking it apart. So the first thing you're gonna do is this little button right here on your magazine floor plate. That needs to be pushed in. Now I can't stress this enough, but a lot of people seem to think taking a screwdriver or a metal punch or a pin of some sort is a really good idea and pushing this in and slipping with it and leaving a big scratch all the way across their floor plate. Now you will do that. Your gun will have a giant scratch. It will be really ugly and everyone will know that you did not take it apart properly. So don't do that. I actually use and this may be very silly, but I actually use the tip of an oil bottle with a plastic cap on it or something similar to that. I've used a ballpoint pen uh, cap, anything that will just kind of fit in there and you can just press down and then press down, you've moved your floor plate out a little bit and that's still pressed down and you can see this is starting to come out. So a little bit of pressure there. And out comes your follower, your spring, and your floor plate. And that is all one unit. You can take this apart. It's very simple to do. We'll take a look at that later. I should just add this gun has been cleared before we did any of this. So don't worry about a loaded gun. So you can see up into your magazine now. Next thing you're gonna do is put your gun on fire, cock your hammer, and this lever right here needs to be pushed up. On this gun, you actually can do it by hand. So, in that case, we're kind of lucky on this broom handle. Just push this guy up and start pushing, putting some pressure on the uh, barrel here and pushing the grip toward the table. So you just put the gun down like this, muzzle down. Put a little bit of pressure on this while this is being pushed up. Again, put pressure on your, on your grip and start pushing down toward the table. And you'll see this is starting to come out. So at this point, we can probably wiggle the rust out by hand. So what we're gonna do, and keep in mind I am doing this all one-handed while filming this, so be forgiving. And also this is just the way that I personally take these apart. You may have a wonderful system that works for you. So we've now pulled the lower essentially off. And there are rails that this needs to come off on. So just keep manipulating it. There you go. Your gun is now in pieces and you have taken your first step toward disassembly. So you have your entire 
locking mechanism here. This is just held on right here. And this actually will just come off very easily. You'll hear a little snap when you do that. Set that aside. You have your locking piece right here. This just comes off. And here's your lower broom handle part, your lower receiver, if you will, and your upper. So you certainly can also then take out your firing pin and take your bolt out, take your bolt stop out. The way you would do that is this is slotted and you would put a screwdriver in that and turn that counterclockwise. I believe it's counterclockwise. Yes. And then your firing pin will actually come out and then you will basically be good to go. I'm actually not going to take this one completely apart because it really isn't necessary on this gun. But I just wanted to show you uh, some of the very basic steps and really I can't stress enough this with how many broom handles that actually have big scuffs on their floor plates as well as right here you will always see on most guns a lot of scuffing here from people pushing this this lever up too much and, and getting frustrated and pushing too hard and wearing away the bluing in that little area. And sometimes you'll see scuffs and all kinds of things. So as you can see on broom handles, a lot of your parts are gonna have the last three digits of the serial number. This one certainly has it. This one has it. Some of these parts actually will have it. This one does not. But you've got your serial number there and repeated on the hammer, of course. And then your bolt also has it. And I will say that a lot of times the grips will have it. Not always. I've actually not taken these grips off. So we'll take a look at this one. And always be very gentle with this screw because it is very, very easy to lose control of it. And your screwdriver will slip and it'll damage your screw and probably the grips. So get this off. And these grips are actually numbered to the gun. And that will give you an idea of what standard numbered broom handle grips look like. And as you can see, the gun ends in 714 and the last three digits of the serial number on it. Now I will say that not all grips are actually numbered. So if you get a really nice gun and the grips look period to the gun and they look really good and you pull the grips off and there's no number on them, don't freak out. A lot were numbered, certainly some weren't. It's not the end of the world. You didn't get screwed, probably. Um, and then this part is usually also numbered to the gun as well. Sometimes your magazine floor plate will be numbered. Um, this one is not. And sometimes you will even see this being numbered to the gun as well. I have in fact seen ones that are numbered on top. That is exceptionally rare, but I have seen a couple. And a lot of times on the side, I've seen it as well. Again, pretty rare, but it does happen. So I hope you have enjoyed seeing how to take one of these apart. We'll do a video on how to put one together coming soon. Thanks for watching.